On the 15th day of October, Halloween gave to me 15 Lees counting, 14 brides abiding, 13 Carfax abbeys, 12 fathers stripping, 11 au pairs drowning, 10 children creeping, 9 Roddy seizing, 8 snowy mazes, 7 bacons digging, 6 doorways pending, 5 children yowling, 4 zombie bulls, 3 haunted mirrors, 2 monster houses, and a fog that makes it hard to see. Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to another edition of our 31 Days of Halloween here on Legion Podcasts. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for joining us yet again. Uh, and I will ask you this. here, here I, I've been uh, pretty lax in trying to do promotion and so forth. Um, but I will say, if you've been enjoying, you know, this is the 15th. We're about halfway through the series. If you've been enjoying it, uh, how about you tell somebody? That's all. Just tell somebody like, hey, I, I've been listening to 31 Days of Halloween over on Legion, and that's been fun. Uh, that's all we ask. That's it. And that's only if you enjoy it. Um, so, uh, with that out of the way, let's get back to our filthy business of counting down the movies that I have been watching for the 31 Days of Halloween. And we've been on a bit of a vampire kick. We started with 1979's Dracula, uh, then went to maybe my favorite Hammer vampire movie, which is The Brides of Dracula. And so I wanted to revisit the Christopher Lee. Ironically, we did one movie that has Peter Cushing, but no Christopher Lee. And now we're doing a, a movie that's uh, Christopher Lee, but no Peter Cushing. That aside, uh, I do want to say that Dracula Has Risen from the Grave is, uh, first of all, the movie we're talking about. It uh, exists in the Dracula series about eight years after Brides of Dracula, when the series really had gotten, dare I say, long in the tooth. Um, we're not quite at the uh, Dracula 80, 1972 era where things got uh, really swinging. But it's you can definitely tell that this was a film series that was starting to wind down a little bit. Um, there's really nothing new about Dracula Has Risen from the Grave. But uh, that formula that it has works really well. And I, I like this one in particular because there are a couple of like interesting little tidbits. Um, so like I said, it's a hammer film production from 1968. It, uh, not directed by Terrence Fisher, uh, as it happens, it was instead directed by Freddie Francis, uh, who, uh, would direct, uh, things like, Legend of the Werewolf and Trog and the Deadly Bees, that kind of thing. Um, the Evil of Frankenstein, widely regarded as one of the worst uh, Hammer movies ever. So, uh, Freddie Francis, no Terrence Fisher. But he uh, he did have a long and storied career, and I think this might be the best movie of his I've seen. Um, so, it basically, it is the story of uh, a dude in in this village that has been terrorized by Dracula. In the last film, they refer to the fact that Dracula fell into some ice near his castle and was destroyed, uh, as they put it, by the uh, the freezing and running waters. Um, but in this one, it turns out that old Dracula was just put on ice, uh, quite literally, and uh, when one of the local priests gets it in his head that he wants to go exercise... Dracula's castle because they're like, Hey, he's dead and all, but that place still is still creepy as fuck. And everybody hates it. And we hate living under the shadow of it. And so this priest rolls into town and he's like, I will go and exorcise this castle one final time. Never again shall Dracula, uh, the, the shadow of Dracula cast its stain on this town. Um, I, that's not really what he says, but it was fun to do that voice. And so, so what happens is, uh, he and a local priest roll up on Castle Dracula. One thing leads to another, and, and this bald-headed priest uh, falls down and, and cuts his head, and in so doing, the blood trickles down to Dracula and revives him. And so this bald priest becomes kind of his Renfield in this movie. Okay, so the best parts of... Dracula has risen from the grave. I'm going to kind of ruin for you, but I don't care. And you should still watch it. 
it's again this is kind of the schlock era of of the uh hammer vampire movies and that doesn't mean it's bad it just means it's not great it's a little tawdry um it definitely plays up the buxomness of its cast um dracula is uh like just completely red-eyed he looks like a dude that's just been on a bender and waking up on the back end of it half the movie uh but he's got those red hypnotic eyes and uh, and Christopher Lee is, is great in it. Like there are moments uh, that, uh, they to exercise Dracula, they take this golden cross and and shove it through the doors of Castle Dracula. And there's this great moment where when Dracula sees this, uh, he goes, "Who would do this thing?" It's uh, it's quite fun. And so they end up getting rid of this cross. Like his flunky, the bald headed priest. Uh, takes it and tosses it over the side of the cliff where it stands upright in the earth, uh, foreshadowing the conclusion of this movie. Um, and ba- back to the stuff that I really like about it. Christopher Lee is great in it. Um, it is, uh, it, it's it's a, a swift moving film. It doesn't fuck around. Um, and it kind of gets to the Dracula stuff in, in pretty short order, which I appreciate. Um, you know, the stuff that happens in the village is pretty routine. It's like, oh, the local tavern owner's wife has gone missing and uh, people are turning up dead and l- 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 without blood and shit like that. And um, it, it turns out like our Monsignor, the, uh, the, the bald headed priest who uh, started all this ends up kind of saving the day, ultimately redeeming himself by giving this benediction where he kind of sings this prayer and it's lip synced and it's wonderful. It is just like beatific uh, as he recites this prayer. And and Dracula gets double killed in this movie because he gets stabbed through the heart with a, a golden cross. Uh, what fell down. And man, when I saw that as a kid and I was like, oh, my God, you don't <laughs> you don't have to just use a stake to kill Dracula. What if and I'm just asking what if you stabbed him through the heart with a golden cross? Uh, these are the kinds of questions that that I was interested in as a young man. And and I, I had to get to the bottom of it. And it was Hammer Movies uh, that, that gave me the answers I was seeking. So um, I love Dracula Has Risen from the Grave. Uh, I think it's kind of cheeky. It knows what it is. Uh, it's very fun. Like I said, it's pretty quick. So you, it's got that going for it. Like you could slip this in as like a double feature. Like you start with this and then you watch the brides of Dracula and you're like, Oh fuck. One of these is much better than the others, but they're both fun. Uh, so I had a great time with it. I hope you do too. Um, this, is this the last of the hammer movies we're going to talk about? Maybe so. Uh, certainly the last of the vampire movies that we are going to be talking about for the 31 days of Halloween, just a little blip in the, in the, the radar in the schedule to talk about these. Uh, and now back to business and we are going to, uh, to be discussing a new movie tomorrow on October 16th, uh, to start us on the weekend. Um, it will be Friday tomorrow. Can you believe it? So, uh, guys, thanks so much. First of all, for beginsies, uh, thanks for listening. Uh, as always, feel free to reach out and let me know what you're doing this, uh, Halloween season. Bo at Legion podcasts.com is where you send that email. Uh, give it a subject line Halloween, or you can just go over to Legion podcasts.com and, uh, the posts for all these are there. And, uh, the link to the email is right there in the post. So, uh, however you want to do it, uh, just drop me a line. I don't care. Uh, you know, send me pigeons. Do it ghost dog style. That is a movie that I should watch for Halloween. Uh, but you know, it's a stretch. So <laughs> that's it for right now, everybody. Uh, thanks again for listening. Have a great Thursday. Uh, come back tomorrow for another movie as we abandon vampires for, uh, something new perhaps. And, uh, I'll tell you all about it then. Uh, have a good day. <laughs>